Now, let's break down the IV fluids nursing students are always tested on. We are talking about the isotonic, the hypertonic, and the hypotonic fluids. And we'll talk about how to identify them, what they do to the cell in the body, and what they are used for. And as always, I have endless review on IV fluids. Go review it, it's very important, okay? And if you love my teaching, you will love my master method flashcards that contain 11 body system and over 120 endless most tested disorders. Now, let's go. 0.9 sodium chloride is what is referred to as normal saline. So when you hear normal saline, it's 0.9 sodium chloride. Now, how to identify the type of fluids, right? 0.9 normal saline will be our base line. Now, pay attention to the number 0.9 because this will be our base number and it will help you to identify if you have hypertonic fluids or hypotonic fluids or isotonic fluids, okay? If you have hypertonic fluids, the number will be greater than 0.9. The number before the IV fluid name will be greater, like as it implies, hyper. The number will be high numbers and it will be old number. Example of hypertonic fluid like 10% dextrose in water, 5% dextrose in normal saline, 3% sodium chloride. Those are hypertonic fluids and you see the number, they are greater than 0.9 right and now how to identify you have hypotonic fluids right the number before the fluid name will be lower than 0.9 keep in mind 0.9 sodium chloride is the normal saline so if you want to know if you have hypotonic fluids the number before the iv fluid name will be lower as the name implies hypo low and that's when you see 0.45 normal saline and that is half saline 0.33 percent normal saline that's one third normal saline 0.225% normal saline, that's one fourth normal saline. Now there is an exception I want you to keep in mind, which is 5% distress in water. Now 5% distress in water is isotonic in the bag. When you have the fluids in your hand, in the bag, it is isotonic. But once it's infused in the body, it starts metabolizing, it becomes hypotonic. So 5% distress in water is both isotonic and hypotonic. Okay, now that you know how to identify your fluids, let's go into each types of fluids. Now, the first IV fluids we talk about is hypotonic fluids. It means in this IV fluids, there is less salt, more water concentration level in these fluids, okay? And when hypotonic fluids is infused in the body, hypotonic fluids cause water or fluids to shift into the cell and cause the cell to swell up. So memory trick to remember hypotonic fluids is Hypo makes the cell swell like a hippo, okay? Now, let's go into example of hypotonic fluids. The first one is 0.45% normal saline, which is half saline. And what are they used for? They are used in cellular dehydration to rehydrate the cell in conditions like hypernatremia, diabetes ketoacidosis, DKA, and HHS, okay? Not in consideration with hypotonic fluids. Listen to me. Do not give these fluids to patients with increased intracranial pressure. Why? Because like I've explained, hypotonic fluids shift water into the cell and cause the cell to swell like a hippo. So if you should give this to patients that already have increased intracranial pressure, the fluids will cause water to shift into the brain cell and cause the brain cell to swell up like a hippo. And that is not what we want. That will cause cerebral edema. And that is why you should avoid it in patients with um, a trauma or that have increased intracranial pressure. Also, monitor for neurostatus when your patient is on hypotonic fluids and monitor their level of consciousness, their LOC, when they are on 0.45% normal saline. Now, let's go into the next one. The next one is 0.33% normal saline. What is this used for? 0.33% normal saline can be used for hypernatremia, that is, high sodium in the blood because it can be used to dilute sodium level okay also it can provide free water to replace cellular dehydration now not in consideration with 0.33 percent um normal saline is monitor for cerebral edema why because hypotonic fluids shift water into the cell okay so you have to monitor for cerebral edema so that um there is no much fluids going into the brain cell because it will cause the cell to swell up like a hippo. And we don't want that. And that's why you should monitor for cerebral edema when your patient is on when your patient is on 0.33% normal saline. Actually, when your patient is on hypotonic fluids, 
Also, monitor their blood pressure, assess for confusion, headache, and seizure because these are early signs of overcorrection of sodium and it is already affecting their neural status or level of consciousness. Okay, now the next hypotonic fluid we'll move into is 0.225% normal saline. This is used in patients with severe hypernatremia and it is often used in pediatrics to provide free water. And the nursing consideration remains the same for all hypotonic fluids. Do not give it to patients that have increased intracranial pressure because it will cause cerebral edema. There is an exception. The last hypotonic fluid we'll talk about, which is 5% distress in water. And I need you to understand that distress is sugar. So this is 5% sugar in water. So this is sugar and water. Now, 5% distress in water, this is the twist about it. It is isotonic in the bag that is equal sugar and sugar and water level concentration in the bag but once the um, fluid is infused in the body and it starts metabolizing it turns into hypotonic fluids and that's why we are talking talking about it under hypotonic fluids and it is used for cellular mild dehydration calorie support and hypernatremia because it provides free water to neutralize the hypernatremia high sodium now, when your patient is on 5% distress in water, monitor for signs of hyperglycemia. Monitor the blood glucose, glucose closely, especially in diabetic patients because it contains distress is sugar. And as always, monitor neural status because when 5% distress in water is metabolized, it becomes hypotonic and it will provide free water and can shift water into the brain cell. So monitor for cerebral edema, okay? Now let's go into hypertonic fluids. In hypertonic fluids, it means the fluids contain high salt, less water concentration level. And hypertonic fluids cause water to shift out of the cell and cause the cell to shrink, okay? Now let's go to example of hypertonic fluids. The first example is 3% normal saline. It is used in severe symptomatic hyponatremia that is the sodium is so low that is already causing some neurological uh, symptoms like confusion like seizure like coma because of the low sodium level now nursing consideration for all hypertonic fluids right they must be infused through the central line because hypertonic fluids are very harsh on the vein and it can cause phlebitis that is inflammation of the vein if it is infused through peripheral line another nursing concentration is monitor for neural status and um, sodium level since it is used to correct severe hyponatremia so you have to monitor the sodium level and also do not infuse hypertonic fluids um too fast because like I, like i said it causes the cell to shrink it's pull out water from the cell and causes the cell to shrink so if you infuse it too fast especially with patients that have cerebral edema and you give them hypertonic fluids if you infuse it too fast it will cause the fluids to shift out of the cell too quickly and shrink the brain cell which will cause permanent damage to the brain and it can also cause paralysis and seizure now the next hypertonic fluid is 5% distress in normal saline. It is used for fluid replacement when a patient have dehydration. And since it's sugar in normal saline, distress is sugar, it provides calorie support to patients that are on nothing by mouth, NPO, and it also provides electrolyte like sodium to patients that are on nothing by mouth. It also helps to prevent hypoglycemia for patients that is on nothing by mouth because distress is sugar, like I said. Now, nursing consideration when your patient is on 5% um, distress in normal saline. Monitor for fluids overload and monitor sodium and signs of hyperglycemia since it's sugar. Now, the last hypertonic fluids we talk about is 10% distress in water. It is used to treat hypoglycemia if D50 is not available. And it is also nutrition support if TPN, total parenteral nutrition, is interrupted. That is, you can give 10% distress in water if patients that are on TPN and the TPN is interrupted or paused, you can give them 10% uh, distress in water because it contains high sugar and that will provide calories. So, so nursing concentration for 10% distress in water, it contains high sugar. So monitor glucose level, monitor for signs of hyperglycemia also, okay? And also make sure to infuse it through the central line, not the peripheral line because it is very harsh to the veins. 
and the very last one we'll go into is isotonic fluids now isotonic fluids as the name implies iso means equal tonic means concentration so there's equal concentration of water and salt level in these fluids and this fluid stays in the vessel they stay they stay in the intravascular space they do not move out of the cell like hypertonic fluids or move into the cell like hypotonic fluids now the first example under isotonic fluids is 0.9 percent normacillin it is used for fluid resuscitation when there is fluid loss from not from vomiting from diarrhea and hemorrhage that is bleeding loss of blood and also keep in mind normacillin is the only fluid that is compatible for blood transfusion normacillin only 0.9 percent sodium chloride normacillin only and lastly, it can be used in DKA, diabetes ketoacidosis. Now, nursing considera consideration, watch out for fluid overload, especially in um, conditions like congested heart failure and renal disease. And since you are monitoring for um, fluid overload, also remember to monitor for long sound. Why? Because you are watching out for crackles since it causes fluid overload. So you are listening for crackles, edema, and high blood pressure. Next, isotonic fluid is lactate ringers. LR. Now, LR is an isotonic fluid that also contains some electrolytes. Electrolytes like sodium, like uh, potassium, like uh, calcium, chloride, and lactate itself. And it looks a lot like plasma. It is used in burns, trauma, and post-op fluid replacements. So when you're thinking about LR, think about plasma in the bag. Now, nursing consideration for LR. Avoid it in patients with renal failure and patients that are hyperkalemic, that is, they already have high potassium. Why? LR contains potassium, one of the electrolytes. And if you should give it to patients that are already hyperkalemic or the patients that, that have renal failure, that is kidney failure, now, the kidney would not be able to excrete potassium out. Now, this will lead to accumulation of potassium in the body. And you know what that will do? It will make the patient hyperkalemic and that can lead to um, cardiac arrhythmias and dysrhythmias. So you want to avoid it in patients that are hyperkalemic and, and patients that have renal failure, okay? Also avoid it in patients that have liver failure or liver disease. Because the liver is what converts the lactate that is in lactate ringer to bicarbonate. So if patients already have liver disease, they will not be able to convert the lactate into bicarbonate. And, and instead of correcting acidosis, LR may cause the lactate to build up since the um, liver can't convert or metabolize it into bicarbonate. And once lactate builds up, it worsens lactic acidosis. Also remember this, LR is not compatible with blood products because it contains calcium in it. And calcium will cause the blood to clot or clumps up. And the very last isotonic fluid we go into is 5% distress in water, which is the exception, exception. It is isotonic in the bag and hypotonic in the body. So we'll be talking about it as isotonic fluids now. It is used for mild dehydration and calorie support. It is also used for hypernitremia, that is it dilutes high sodium level and also help the kidney to flush out solutes. And also in consideration for um, 5% distress in water is monitor patient sugar level because it contains sugar and water, like I said, and it can raise sugar level. So monitor for signs of hyperglycemia in patients taking 5% distress, okay? All right, guys, I hope now you can identify your IV fluids, the hypertonic, the hypotonic, and the isotonic. Thank you.